Hey there. Today I'm going to talk about a topic I was more or less requested to do a video on. And today I'm going to talk about cleaning a fountain pen. So there are a few myths, I think, and some misunderstandings um, on this topic. So let's 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 try to be clear. You use a fountain pen, and a fountain pen uses ink. And according to some people, you should flush out your pen once a year. According to some, every three months. Others say weekly. Um, whatever. I think it's a good idea to to simply clean your pen after every use. It may be a bit excessive. But I have done so with my pens, and all of my pens write every time I ink them up. It's that simple. I recently bought a pre-owned pen, which I'll show you later on, uh, a Parker 25 Flighter. That pen was disgusting. It didn't write anymore. There were crusts of ink in the feed. It was really, really bad. It took all of my skill and effort to uh, make it write again. So clean your pens. Especially if you like switching around colors, you have to clean your pen out before uh, you switch colors. Otherwise the, the colors will mix, they will run out, and instead of having a yellow ink, you will have a blue-yellow ink, etc. Um, if you always use the same color in your pen, I think you don't have to flush out your pen after every use. You can do it, but it's not absolutely necessary. But even then, flush it out regularly you will only extend the lifespan of your pen. Okay, I'm going to show you my extensive cleaning routine in a second. Uh, first of all, let's let's talk about the exterior of the pen. Is there anything you can do to, to take care of the exterior of the pen? Yes, I think there are some uh, there's some stuff you can buy. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't have the name. You can use that to sort of polish the outside of a pen. So I'm not talking about removing ink or anything. I'm just talking about polishing the exterior of a pen. Um, you can do that if, if uh, uh, the exterior of the pen, the, the looks of the pen are very important to you. I have to admit, I have never done this. What I usually do is I take a simple uh, lint-free cloth and I just uh, wipe down the pen. And that's it. But if you want to, just do a Google search for pen polish or something, and I'm sure you'll you'll find some material. Okay. Well, I I think that's pretty much it. In the uh, second part of the video, I'll show you my cleaning routine, and I'll talk a little bit about how to store a pen. Um, in somewhat more detail, I think it doesn't really matter. Some people ask me, do you have to store your pens nib upright? Uh, well that's a good idea if they are inked up. If they are not inked up, I think it doesn't really matter. Uh, because there's no ink that will uh, flow through the, the nib, nib creep, or etc. So, I think you can just store them any way you like if they are empty and clean. Okay, something I did not say in the cleaning part, um, which I will simply say here. If you have cleaned all the parts of your pen, the nib, the feed, uh, the, the grip section, etc., it's a good idea to leave them to dry. So simply, uh, it's it's especially if you have more pens, that's not an issue. But I, I recommend leaving them to dry for a couple of hours, and preferably a night. Just put them on a, a tissue or paper towel or, or a, a soft cloth, or whatever, and leave them to dry to the air before inking it up again. That way, you won't get diluted ink. Even if it's not completely dry, there will not be so much water in there that the ink will completely dilute. But it's always more pleasant to work with a, a dry pen, I think. Okay, so that's it. Let's have a look at the cleaning. I hope this is going to be useful. And um, that's it. So I'll see you later. Bye-bye. Okay, so when you're going to clean pens, you're going to need some tools of the trade. I'll just give you a quick overview. We have some toilet paper, uh, we have an ink cloth, a little uh, container for water, it doesn't really matter what you use as long as you can you know, put some water in there. Um, I have some silicon grease, I have a small tube, I have some ink syringes, I have some stuff I'll come back to, uh, these are cleaning cartridges I call them, uh, we have a, a little a bottle, some, some type of vial you can put ink in. We have two bulb syringes, 
uh, I have a converter just to show you some stuff. I have a, a little pair of tweezers, I probably won't need them. I have some other tools which I'll come back to. And I have a couple of pens and an old toothbrush. So that's quite a bit of material. Uh, I'm not going to use everything for every panel clean, but I'll give you a general overview of what I do when I clean my pens. Okay, so... Let's start with understanding the pen. Here we have two pens, and these are two excellent pens. Here we have one of those Noodler's Flex pens. I chose the demonstrator that are, so that I can show you how it works. We have the nib and the feed, which you can see in there. This is the, the part of the feed that actually extends past the grip section. And here we have the piston, which moves up and down as I twist this blind cap. Now, what is the beauty of this pen? The beauty of this pen is that you can disassemble it. So here we have the feed and the nib, and on this part you can just unscrew this end, then off pops the blind cap. Whoop, there it, it flew away. Here I have it, and here I have the actual piston. Now I can push that out, I can't really grab it on this end. I always use a chopstick, this is one of the extendable chopsticks. It's just pliable wood so it will not damage anything in there. You stick it in the end where the uh, nib used to be and then with some care you can push out the entire piston. Okay, so to clean this pen I would simply flush out uh, the actual barrel with a bulb syringe. So for those of you unfamiliar with this, a bulb syringe you can buy. This is also known as a snot sucker uh, because you use this for babies. You stick it in their nose, you you, you squeeze this, it's just a bit of rubber, uh, and then it will uh, suck out snot. You can also use it for babies' ears, you can flush babies' ears, etc. Uh, I use them to clean pens. They're pretty cheap. You can buy them up, uh, you can pick them up at your pharmacy or something. Uh, I, I fill them with water, so you fill this part with water, you can take this off, uh, fill it with water, put this back on again, and when you squeeze it, a, a stream of water will squirt out. I'm not going to do that with this pen because this wasn't really inked up, but I would just put it in the back end, hold this over the container. Of course, it makes sense to do this near uh, a sink, but I'll do it at my desk to show you everything. Uh, you, you flush it out, um, and then if you want to, you can clean this out. You can you preferably use some cloth that doesn't really fray. Um, you could, in theory, use toilet paper that can leave some residue in there. But you could roll it up and, and put it in there. I'm sure you understand what I mean. Okay, then we have the piston. You don't really have to do anything about that, but you can be nice to the piston. Take a bit of silicon grease. This is from the Goulet Pen Company. I think it costs $2 or something. It'll last a long time. You open it up, if you can. Now my fingers are wet. Okay, here we go. Uh, this is just silicon grease. You, you put a bit on your finger. You take the, uh, the piston and you, you put it on this end. And this will do two things. First of all, it will create a nice seal to make sure that ink in here does not pass beyond the actual uh, piston. And also, it will make sure that the piston moves smoothly, which is always nice. Okay, then you can assemble the whole thing again. Make absolutely sure that there is no... Uh, silicon grease left on your fingers when you deal with the nib or the feed. Why? Because that will seriously hamper ink flow. Uh, it will actually block ink flow. So you don't want that. That's why you put it on there. You don't want ink to pass beyond that point. But you do want ink to, uh, you know, flow through your feed and nib. So, there we go. An easy pen to clean. Another easy pen to clean is the Twisby Diamond 540. Why is that easy to clean? This is easy to clean because, again, you can disassemble it entirely. So, uh, don't worry, I'm not going to show you every single pen I own, but this is just to, to demonstrate the point. As you can see, everything is rolling away here. Uh, as you can see, you can disassemble this. Uh, you, you get this nice nifty little tool from Twisby, you can put it in there, uh, you can disassemble that, so you can completely disassemble this pen. And then again, it's, it's fairly easy, you can just flush out parts of the pen, 
uh, you can clean the piston the way I've just shown you just uh, you know hold it over a container uh, pour some water on it and then rub it down with a cloth of some kind um, and it, it should work so these pens are easy to clean because you can disassemble them now unfortunately many pens cannot be disassembled most pens can be disassembled to some extent, but some cannot be disassembled. Here we have a very nice Montblanc Meisterstück 146. I open the cap, and that's it. I cannot do anything else with this pen. You cannot remove the nib, you cannot remove the feed. This too is a piston filler. You cannot remove the blind cap, you cannot remove the piston. You cannot do a single thing because you need specialized tools. Montblanc does not publish their uh, maintenance guides online or anywhere else. So this is really a matter of if you want to do serious maintenance, you have to send it into Montblanc. So the only way to clean this pen is to fill up a container of some kind with water, put in the pen, make sure there's no ink in there, so just push out the ink, twist this end so that you suck up water, Put that water out in another container, suck up more water, and continue doing that until the ejector is actually clear water and no longer inky water. And that is all there's to it. So that's how you clean a piston filler you cannot disassemble in any way. Now, fortunately, most pens can be disassembled to some extent. Here I have a Lamy Vista. Uh, I, I picked the Vista because it's also a demonstrator, so I hope you can see what I'm doing a bit better. Okay, so what am I going to do? I'm going to do a couple of things. This pen is actually completely inked up. Uh, there's still quite some ink in the cartridge, but I'll show you how to deal with that. Um, first, we take off the barrel. This barrel, there's, of course, no ink in there, so I can just put that away. I can put the cap away, we do not need them, we have to clean this. So imagine I would be a person that refills his cartridges. You can do that. You can, once it's empty, you can use an ink syringe. Uh, you can buy these, for example, from the Goulet Pen Company. Uh, you put on the needle, you draw up ink from a bottle, you put the needle in the cartridge and you refill it once it's empty. Now, today we're going to uh, do the reverse of that. I'm going to show you uh, how to empty the cartridge, the easiest way I've found, and that is to use an ink syringe and a bit of tubing. Uh, I, I, I got this, I think, from a pair of rubber boots which was tied together with this tube. I'm sure you can also buy this separately. Uh, something you undoubtedly cannot see. Well maybe, I, well, maybe you can. I cut this part off at a slanted angle. Uh, that makes it easier to stick it into the ink syringe, which is what I'll do now. There we go. Now, what I do is I take the cartridge and I put in the other end of the tube. Then I simply draw up the ink into the syringe and I dispose of the ink in this vial because, uh, of course, it would be a waste to throw away the ink. So, I have to be a little careful because this splashes. There we go. The majority, or the, the majority, the, um, uh, the biggest part of the ink that was in the cartridge is now safely in my vial. As soon as you're done with something like this, put on the lid because you're going to knock this over. Especially if you don't put the lid on. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to take some kind of container, I'll take another one of these glass jars, I really like them, they're very useful. I put in some water, I put in my syringe, I draw up the water, now I have watery, or actually I have inky water. I put that in another bottle. I do this again. That makes a very nice noise. And I put it in there. I just spilled some, which is why I always have a cloth handy. And now the syringe is clean again. Okay, now what do I do with this cartridge, because uh, imagine I want to refill it, but I want to refill it with another color of ink, so I have to clean this out. Well, for this, I always use 
this fantastic type of syringe. Uh, I know that this existed, I learned of its existence through my job. And we use this in our EEG lab where we use this to prepare the participants uh, when they get electrodes on their heads. That sounds a lot worse than it actually is. And I went to my pharmacy and they were able to order a few from me. Um, so here we have it. The good thing about these syringes is that they hold a lot of water and they have a built-in needle which is actually plastic and it's curved and that is really really useful. I'll show you why. First of all we draw up some ink in here. Excuse me, we draw up some water in here. There we go. I take the cartridge. I point it to the container. I put in the needle. I can point it away from me because the needle is curved, which is really useful because this is going to splash quite terribly. I go about halfway through my syringe. I take the tube again. I put it in the other syringe I had lying around here. I make sure the inky water goes to the bottom of the cartridge. I put in the tube. I use the syringe to draw up the inky water. Put it in the container again. I repeat the process with the other half of, actually it's about a, uh, well, a good third of water that's left in the syringe. There we go. I suck up that water, make sure that the uh, tube is all the way down into the cartridge. Again, I simply use the syringe to draw up the water. I put that out, and what we have here is an extremely clean cartridge, which can now simply dry. It should be fairly dry because I drew out all the water, but you can just leave it on, I don't know, someplace in the sun or something and it will dry and you are done. Okay, part one. So now I can refill this. I'm sure you understand how to do that. As I just told you, you take the syringe, you apply the needle to it, you suck up some um, ink and then you deposit it in the cartridge and that's it. Okay, now we have this part of the pen and that needs to be clean. You may be able to see this part here. Well, that is ink. So, um, you see the, the feed right here, and right there there is ink. So what are you going to do? Well, the simplest way to clean this, I think, is to use a bulb syringe filled with water. I drew out a lot of water from this one, but there's still water in there. You put it in the back of the feed, like this, and then you simply squeeze it. Water will flow out, and uh, it'll flow through the nib and the feed and it will clean the pen. Now, unfortunately, these bulb syringes were not made to be used for this purpose. So they will fit pretty well in the back end of a pen. But as you can see here, this pen has these annoying little notches. So what are you going to do about that? Because it will simply not fit very well. And even if it does fit, water is going to flow out from these little openings. Well, for that, there is a very simple solution, and this is not something, by the way, you'll end up like this. Nothing to do about it. Um, this was a simple solution suggested to me, uh, the cleaning cartridge. What is a cleaning cartridge? Well, I have a couple here, different lab brands, as you can see, I've, I've labeled them today, I need a Lamy. This is just a Lamy cartridge, except that I cut it in half. Why? Because that will fit right on there. Have a look at this part, I'll try to zoom in. Here you see the black thing there is the nipple that usually a cartridge or a converter will fit onto. Well, here we have the cartridge. As you can see with the bulb syringe, it doesn't really reach far into the pen. Well, you can solve that by simply taking a, an empty cartridge, cutting it in half, putting it on there. As you can see, it fits all the way on there because that's what it was meant to be used for. Okay, then. You simply take the bulb syringe and put that in the back of the cartridge. This way you get an excellent fit. And as you can see, in a matter of seconds, the water 
that is flowing from your nib is actually clear. There is no more blue ink in there. I use another bulb syringe just to demonstrate this completely. This is a clean pen. And as you can see, if you look inside there, the big, the big patch of ink that was in there is pretty much gone. It's still a bit dark, but that's actually not ink, that's just the pen. You take this out, and you're pretty much done. Now, um, with these pens, I just used my ink cloth, it's getting pretty messy here. Um, with these pens, actually, you can disassemble them even further. I hope I can do that, because my fingers are terribly wet. I have absolutely no grip. Ah, here we go. What I just did was I pulled out the feed and the nib. Now, you can also remove the nib, which is a bit difficult right now. Again, I have very wet fingers. And there we go. So now we have the nib, the feed, and the pen. Now, before you try doing this with your pens, please be very careful because you cannot do this with any pen. If you do this, you may break your feet in half, you may damage the pen. Sometimes you don't pull them out, but you twist them out. It's like a screw-in type of thing. But be careful. If you're not sure, go to the Fountain Pen Network, post your question there, look through the forums, you'll probably find the answer. Because again, with some pens you cannot do this at all. The reason I picked this pen is that this is somewhere in between this type of pen that you can disassemble completely and this type of pen that you cannot disassemble. Um, Alright, so what do you do with this? Well, you take a container, you fill it up with water. If it is not clean, of course, if it is clean you don't have to do this. You throw it in there. You see it's just in there. Make sure it's covered with water. Take the nib throw it in there. Don't leave it in there for weeks, uh, but you know, uh, if it's really dirty, leave it in for a night. Your pen will survive and it will be very clean. Then when you're done, the water will be inky. Uh, yep, there we go, divine intervention. The water is inky, uh, so you may not want to use your fingers to, to grab this stuff out there and to pull it out. You can use a pair of tweezers. Right, then I have a bit of toilet paper. I put the stuff on there. You can leave it to dry. And now the water is so inky that I cannot find my nib anymore, but I'm sure it's in there. Um, and that's pretty much it. Uh, so I think these are all my suggestions. What else can you do? Well, if your nib is, or if your, your feet actually is very, very dirty. I'll give you an example. I recently bought this pen online, a Parker 25 Flyter. Uh, it didn't write. With a lot of trouble, I was able to remove the feed and the nib, and that was disgusting. It was like the, the, the rack of the Titanic. It was covered with crusts of black-blue ink. Apparently, the previous owner, and this pen was made around the 80s, had never cleaned his pen. Well, that is what happens, and then your pen will not write anymore. The channel of the feed, so the thing, well, you can't really see it very well with this pen, I'm afraid, but uh, the channel was clogged. You can sort of see it here, I suppose. Um, there's a channel in the middle of your feed, you know, which actually, that actually, the, the, uh, uh, that's, that's very important, and that was clogged, so the pen, my Parker 25, did not write anymore. Uh, and simple water, soaking it with water like this, as I've just shown you, uh, simply wasn't enough. So I first put it in 25% household ammonia and 75% water. Let it soak for a night. That's pretty aggressive, but it'll, it, you know, it, if you don't do it for weeks, it shouldn't damage your pen. Um, and even that was not enough. So after that, what I did was uh, I took uh, a small sheet. You can, you, you've got this. Let me see if I can find it. Um, there are specific... Ah, here we got one. Okay. So what I did after that, after the ammonia soaking, was I took one of these sheets. You get these with a, um, the, the parallel pens. Um, I, I just sort of flossed these little gills on the, uh, the feed. 
that worked and then even then it did not write particularly well so I decided to go for some more aggressive measures took an old toothbrush dipped it in the ammonia water solution and I really just brushed the nib or excuse me the feed like this for a long time and that really took me a long time but then it was clean and now the pen writes. I'm not sure whether it will ever be the smooth writer it was when it left the factory but it does write. So sometimes you need to be patient. Uh, another tip I recently got is that you can uh, especially with piston fillers you can uh, disassemble like this. You can fill them up with milk milk apparently solves ink this was new to me but it really seems to work uh, I tried it out then you can use just a little bit of dishwashing detergent in water and put that in the pan to uh, dissolve the, the, the fat and the, the grease from the milk and you just flush it out with clean water there's also other stuff which you can use to clean your pens professional uh, pen flush if you don't want to experiment with ammonia yourself you can buy this type of stuff Shea Bam makes it uh, I think I've got that right here yeah uh, nettoyant pour stylo so this is a, a cleaning fluid for fountain pens this is JMB's perfect pen flush which comes in a lot bigger bottles which is fairly nice uh, there's a lot of stuff in here including uh, distilled water ammonia etc um, you can use this and you can reuse it a number of times, which is really nice. So you can just uh, suck this up into your pen with a converter, etc. Uh, uh, so that, that really works. You can do that in a piston-filled pen. So there are a lot of options you actually have. Okay, then we have some cartridges. Uh, this is the, the final thing I'd like to tell you today. Uh, some cartridges you can disassemble and others you cannot. If you cannot, this is the cheap Parker uh, converter. You can try to squeeze out as much ink as you can, you can just draw up water and then push it out again. Of course you would have to do that with clean water, not with dirty water like this. Um, you can do that. The good thing about many converters is that some way or another you can disassemble them. As with this one, so you could just flush this through with your bulb syringe, which should be pretty easy, and that's a very fast way to clean uh, your converter. Then you take just a little bit of toilet paper to dry it out and suck out the drops. Um, this part, there will be ink on there. The, the piston, you can just clean that out fairly easily with some water and a, a bit of toilet paper or a cloth of some kind. Then if you want to, you can put some silicon grease on there simply because it will make the uh, cartridge operate a bit smoother. Uh, and then there are cartridges, excuse me, then there are converters which you cannot disassemble. I've never been able to disassemble a Waterman uh, converter, for example. Well, in that case, simply use the technique I've shown you. You can use one of these syringes, or if you can't get one with a curved uh, needle, simply get an, an ink syringe. Uh, if you can't get one of these tubes, forget about that too. Just put on the needle, uh, suck up some water, and... Um, just put it in the converter, squeeze it all in there, squirt it in there, and there will be water in there, and it will be clean too. So there you have it. This is my pen cleaning method. It's uh, somewhat labor intensive, but I never have pens like this which are so clogged up that you can't use them anymore. That is the good thing about all of this. And that's pretty much it. And when it comes to pen storage, I do not think it is necessary to store a pen nib upright if there is no ink in there, which is what someone asked me. Uh, I just put my pens in a pen pouch. This is my everyday carry pouch, but there's also bigger pouches that I own. I put the pens in there and I store them horizontally so they just lie flat. Never had any problems with that. So that is it. Um, I hope this was useful. If you have any great cleaning tips, please feel free to uh, answer them in the comments. If you have any questions, you can always send me a message or leave a comment. And that's it. So I hope this was useful, and um, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.